Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing Insidious Chapter 2. Insidious Chapter 2 starts off with the past in 1986, where we see young Josh and Elise and a, a, former, a partner of hers, Carl, try to help Josh with the new spirit he's been working with. We, she goes upstairs, they play hot and cold, find out that the spirit is not welcoming, and that's when they decide to erase Josh's memories. And then it, we jump right back to where we were after Insidious Chapter 1, with Elise just being murdered by the Bride in Black, where Renee comes in and she's suspicious that Josh murdered her, but the report comes back negative that it was not Josh, but indeed, we, you know, it was the Bride in Black's hands that murdered him, her. And so they go to Lorraine, Josh's mother's house. And, you know, they spend a while there. Uh, things start to get a little paranormal again. So Rene starts seeing toys moving around. And she sees a woman in a white dress who slaps her and knocks her out. And after that, they decide, all right, let's get Elise here. Let's figure out what to do. And Elise sends them to the Angels, Angels something hospital. And so they go and they start to learn about the past of the Bride in Black and how the white woman connects. And yeah, so pretty much the story is about pretty much learning about the Bride in Black and how to get rid of the Bride in Black and that to do that they have to learn about the past of the Bride in Black and we just go on a, an, a you know an amazing adventure and it was a pretty good movie it was it's it's a solid conclusion of the first one we got a lot more adventure going on uh, we I, I thought the storyline was very interesting um, it was more of a story rather than a horror movie like the first one. It was, but the story itself was creepy, if you know what I mean. Um, like, I felt like I got chills from how the story was in general. And there were some jump scares, don't get me wrong. There was, there was not as much as the first one, though. They, they, you could tell they just, they just wanted to focus on the story, and that was great. I mean, I feel like the story was really the important part of the movie, and... It delivered. It was a pretty solid sequel. Uh, I enjoyed it. The characters were amazing. You you were interested in which char all the characters because they split up. You were interested in all of their parts of the story, and you know we were. I was in. We you were intrigued in the Bright and Black's past once you find out about it, and we will discuss it in the spoiler talk. And overall. Um, I'd probably give Insidious Chapter 2 a, we'll go with an 8.5 out of 10. I feel like, you know, maybe they could have added a little bit more scary element to it, but other than that, it was, other than that, it was pretty solid. I mean, it couldn't really get any better than it was, and... I'm going to say James Wan did a good job. Patrick Wilson killed it as acting as the bride in black possessed Josh. And I think, you know, the actors did a great job as the first one. You know, they, they, they really did a good job with the casting, the actors. And we, I really liked Carl. I thought Carl was an interesting addition to the suit, the, the group. And, I am honestly, I'm, this movie excites me. It ends pretty good note, and you guys should check it out. Definitely worth the watch. Okay, now we will go into spoiler talk. So, um, let me get started with Parker Crane's story. I thought Parker Crane's story was very intriguing. I, you know, how we first find out that Renee was taking care of him when she uh, was back in her nursing days. And we learn that because uh, Parker killed himself. Like first he was sent to the hospital because he had to try to castrate himself. 
And then he killed himself after the encounter with Josh because he wanted his child back. And I thought that was very intriguing and a very good motivation because we later on learn on that the, the, the white dress was obviously his mother and she wanted him to be a girl pretty much. I mean, we don't really learn the background of why, but I mean, his father's not around and we could probably assume that she wanted a girl. She wanted a girl and her, his father wanted probably wanted a guy and then they argued, divorced. She took the child. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of interesting how that happened. Uh, I really liked the, I really liked the inter, the, I really liked how he was, you know, telling Renee that this, like, like in Josh's body, he was trying to, uh, fake them out and tell her that it like, not like the supernatural stuff was not happening again, you know? I liked how he kind of seemed a little bit more angrier and you know it just you could really tell it was not Josh and it was really interest it was you know like we and it was really interesting how Renee could tell but she was you know okay all right you know and later on you know there's the attack and all that jazz but I really liked this and I th I thought Parker Crane's story was well done. I thought the solution was well done, and how they brought back Elise was completely epic. Okay, I mean, I feel like her death was a little untimely, and it was good to bring her back by killing the long fiend, long faced fiend, long haired fiend, something like that. You know the. The baddie that worked for the lipstick face demon in the first one. I thought that was epic how she came in and killed, uh, sent him off. And she was, she did a phenomenal job with the performance. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was so awesome that me and my friends stood up and we applauded her entrance because it was so cool. And Lynn Shea just, she can act as Elise. She was born to play Elise. You could just tell. And I really liked the aspect of tying in the first ones, like, you know, what happened when the house was haunted in the first one. It was really Josh breaking through the house. I really liked that. That made sense, and that really brought the two together, which makes it even more epic and more exciting for the fans, I think. And I really liked... You know, I really liked this movie. It was definitely a solid sequel. I this this movie shows that the this movie the this series can have sequels, and it was pretty good. Um, I really liked the ending too, how they ended off on a cliffhanger. Uh, we heard the ca a cackling cackling sound like the lipstick faced demon, so I am assuming it's the lipstick faced demon, the red lipstick faced demon. Excuse me that we hear at the end uh, I really like and I just like how realistic it was I mean I mean like with the family like you can argue oh it was so dumb they erased the memories but I mean I really thought it was like a smart idea you know just forget about this stuff live a normal life and I have a feeling we will see the family again I mean it's bound to happen I mean it was I mean you can't go wrong with Patrick Wilson as your your main star and Rose Byron and I really was yeah sorry I <laughs> I was very impressed I'm trying to think of other favorite parts I really liked the fight scene between Carl and Parker Crane that was pretty epic uh, I really liked I really liked everything about this movie honestly I mean it was I mean it, I mean I feel like I mean, I can't really think of anything. I just, I kind of feel like the mother, I, I feel like the ending was a little kind of cheesy-ish, how they just got rid of the mother and Parker Crane. At least make a big, I mean, it was kind of a little cheesy at the end. That's, that's what kind of lowered the rating for me. But other than that, I mean, the story was phenomenal and well done. And I hope they bring back 
Parker Crane, at least. I mean, holy cow, he was scared. He was creepy. I mean, he wasn't as scary as the lipstick face demon, but he was creepy, interesting, and you know, I wouldn't mind if they brought him back later on. And yeah, that's my final thoughts. What did you guys think of this movie? Let me know down below. And what movie should I be reviewing? We'll try to cover mainly big franchise movies too. I mean, I'm sure after I'm finished with the Insidious reviews, I'll probably jump into Star Wars or Marvel or Lord of the Rings. And then we'll move on to like, you know, and we'll also cover movies like, you know, some good hits like The Call of the Wild, Sonic. Uh, I will probably review 1922 at some point. I just watched it last night. It was pretty good. And yeah, that's pretty much a good overview for you guys on the review portion of this channel. Uh, Again, just comment, suggestions, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. And I'll see you guys soon.